Hi, I'm Dr. Romani, and you can see my many series on narcissism by hitting those links below. I'm here to talk about conversational narcissism. You may wonder, what is conversational narcissism? In its simplest form, it's somebody who consistently brings the conversation back to them, things they know about, things they care about. And so honestly, they're sort of hijacking the conversation. A person who, ha who is prone to conversational narcissism will maintain the conversation to be on things that they know about. So if the conversation starts steering into a direction that where maybe it's someone else's expertise or not their interest, you'll either see the conversational narcissist tune out or attempt to bring the conversation back. In fact, one interesting sign of the conversational narcissist, it's sort of fun to watch, is that when the conversation's about them, whatever it is, and they're in it and they're guiding it and leading it, but then something turns it. And I don't know, it's, I remember this watching this happen once with a conversational narcissist where the direction of the conversation went to children. And I don't think this person had children. And it was so fascinating because it was almost like watching this person fall asleep in front of your eyes, like, like this curtain went down in front of their face and they were so disengaged instead of sort of hearing what these people had to say. So, but it was long as about, it was about the things he cared about. He was in it. And then over time would actually try to bring the conversation back. And sometimes in a contemptuous way, the conversational narcissist may sort of shame the conversational topics or uh, minimize the conversational topics that aren't in line with what they care about. And so they'll say, oh gosh, really, do we want to talk about that? And then we'll then be able to bring the conversation back to what they want. Conversational narcissists will also monopolize the conversation. So if you were to take a conversation and chop it up into sort of percent time, 80% of a conversation will go to the conversational narcissist. They will use it up. They will talk, talk, talk. And what's interesting is when it's not them talking, they'll sometimes step away. So they won't even be in the conversation when it doesn't involve them, things they're interested in and things that they can weigh in on. It, a conversational narcissist will also be quite sort of domineering, authoritarian, and sort of superior in a conversation. They're very, it's almost, it can even almost feel snobby in a way that they will talk down at people. They will be the expert. They will sometimes even humiliate and embarrass people to sort of hold their position as the expert on a given topic, which can, again, make other people over time in a conversation inhibit themselves because they don't want to be made to look foolish by this so-called expert, allowing the conversational narcissist to continue to monopolize the conversation. The conversational narcissist will always pitch themselves as the expert. They are sort of the annoying, arrogant know-it-all. And it would make sense, right? Because it is con consistent with sort of this very arrogant pattern. And so they do. They definitely will say, well, no, it's this and no, it's that. And they don't even hold back. There are times when that kind of expertise on anything, whether it's the pronunciation of a word or some other fact where the conversation would have flowed better just letting it go and without the correction, they always have to be the expert. They always have to be the know-it-all. And the conversational narcissist is never able to read the room, not able to recognize that we don't need them to sort of play kind of a Google during the conversation. They don't have to be a website during the conversation, but they always feel like they need to get in there and don't actually take in how this might be affecting someone, it might be hurting someone's feelings, there's far less regard for that and more of, again, a dominance-oriented need for them to monopolize the conversation and basically sort of hold court. Conversational narcissists are interrupters. They will constantly interrupt people. They will talk over people. You will see this happen, especially in group conversations. So it happens, obviously it'll happen one-on-one. -on -one. You'll be talking and then they'll cut you off, but there's no apology for it. People cut people off all the time. I'm aware, and as, as certainly in some family systems, it's normal. Culturally, in some systems, it can be normal. But there's, if it's not, if that normativeness hasn't been set, or it's a group of people where this isn't the style, the conversational narcissist will consistently, like I said, not only interrupt, but they'll never be, oh, I'm so sorry I cut you off. I got so excited that there's none of that. It's really as though that they either feel entitled to be able to interrupt and weigh in at any time they want and will often not cede the floor and not give the floor over to the person who was originally talking again. They are 
very self-referential. Conversational narcissists are very self-referential to us also to all the good things like, well, one time I did this and I saw this and, oh, I ran this and I was in charge of that. It's very much, that's not even just that they're stating facts, but they're often stating them in a way that makes them look wonderful. The awards they've won, the praise they've gotten. And so it does put people in this sort of kind of squeamishly uncomfortable position of listening to this person kind of extol themselves. And you don't, so many people actually are kind and wouldn't want to say, well, why don't you stop talking about yourself? But it's sort of this uncomfortable. And some people will even report feeling a little embarrassed for the conversational narcissist who doesn't seem to know when to shut up. There is a an arrogant twist to the conversational narcissist where they will often give unsolicited advice sometimes even bad advice or even self-serving advice they give advice only from the frame on the point of view of what would work for them with absolutely no consideration for how this advice might impact this other person does it fit into their lifestyle does it make sense for them can they even afford it and because a conversational narcissist often lacks the empathy and probably wasn't listening before when the person was laying out the problem, the conversational narcissist uses advice giving as a place for them to showboat and show what they know rather than actually trying to help another person. With a conversational narcissist, there's no give and take. A, a healthy conversation, whether between two people or 10 people, is all about reciprocity. It's about someone saying something and then other people listening, reacting to it, responding to that, but responding to it in a way that they show awareness of the person who originally was speaking. In the case of a conversational narcissist, there's none of that empathy. There's none of that reciprocal awareness, that none of that mutuality where, oh, we can sort of go back and forth. It's sort of an all me thing. And they just, they just talk at a person and they do not listen to them. And so it's not an empathic experience. It's just being sort of talked at, which it can be actually be a very destabilizing experience for the other person in the conversation. And a conversational narcissist will often take the conversation, turn it not only into places they want, but also to fulfill agendas they have. So in that way, it's, oh, it's a very manipulative process that the conversational narcissist is going to make their point, sell their point of view, really position themselves to almost get what they need. And so the conversation can almost feel somewhat transactional. I work with a lot of narcissistic folks in therapy. I've talked to a lot of narcissistic folks in my life. It's what I do. And I've worked with a lot of people who've experienced narcissistic relationships. And conversational narcissism seems to be the, you know, sort of the order of the day in these relationships. As a therapist, it can be a little hard to pick it up in therapy because what is a person supposed to talk about in therapy themselves? So I can't say, well, the narcissists all monopolize the conversation because they're kind of supposed to. But what I can start, you can glean some details about it where they may tell me about a conversation they had and I might say, oh, well, when you were talking to them, did you learn about this or that? And the answer is always no, because the conversation was solely about them. And so I am certainly able to see that the way narcissistic clients have talked to me about the conversations they have show very little interest in the experience of others, which definitely gives me some insight into how miserable this conversation must have been for that other person. Hi, I'm Dr. Romani, and you can see my many series on narcissism by hitting those links below. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below for more information on how to access this full series and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Did you like what you heard in this video? If you want to ask a MedCircle doctor a question directly, you can learn how by visiting the links in the description below.